whistle, but the night we Know that the ride or die. I'm Know that the ride or die. What's the Lucky Gamers? It's Lucky Lux, and so today we're gonna be going over the new characters. Gonna be going over if they're worth summoning for you. Again, we're gonna be talking PvP. PVE is something where you can make it do worth with most characters in the game, right? This is just gonna be PvP mostly. What I'm gonna talk about. If they have a PVE benefit, you know that I see, then I'll point it out. But we're gonna talk about again what they can do for the new Hollow battles, Point War, different things like that. So first up, it's gonna be Osiris. Ollie, five star fluid tuned Esper. Uh, it's gonna have some support abilities capable of preventing allies from dying. Uh, first, uh, first, like, kind of thought about that. Decent preventing allies from dying, um, especially if you're getting bursted down, right? You could build possibly Ollie a little tanky to live uh, through uh, from you know having one of your allies taken out. So. First ability, Hook Strike, deals damage to an enemy with a chance of inflicting silence. So based off of the amount of the chance that gives, that, you know, kind of screams out counterattack, because having a counterattacker that can silence is really helpful for keeping your team alive. They can't do any abilities. And if they don't have somebody who can passively clear off debuffs on you, then they're going to be in trouble, honestly. So first ability, not too bad. It just depends on the chance, because... A lot of silences um, right now in the game have a really low chance, and they're not really uh, the greatest on counter set. Uh, and there's only a few people who can put out silence on uh, the enemies. And let's see, this is the second ability. When an allied Esper takes a fatal hit, Ollie's passive ability, Salvific Judgments, grants Salvific Judgments to prevent them from dying, as well as Invincibility and Recovery, and inflicts law of duat on the attacker okay and that's the old so if somebody dies he gives them invincibility and recovery and then counterattacks kind of with the old so the only thing about this is that if you're going against like a chloe or a hide or somebody like that you know they could take off that recovery so you'd still have to but a healer plus like the recovery is only going to be for one turn, I assume. So they're only going to get up to 15% um, HP. They do have the invincibility to pull off one turn. I could see this maybe working with, uh, who is he? Uh, Freddy, right? Freddy does really good at being at low health. You could use this with Freddy and then you could use this too for standoff to keep him at one HP a lot longer. And he could maybe like, you know, this could be like, this kind of reminds me of a Pokemon using the Focus Sash and then just doing a bunch of damage with like having like Blaze and Endure on. Uh, you know, you could possibly make this work with Freddy. I see having them at low health going right into standoff, possibly. But let's see what the third ability does. Law of Duat deals damage to an enemy with additional damage based on the target's max HP inflicting defense down and taunt them yeah so i can see this combo working off with like freddy or a really nice single attacker who can buff themselves um maybe more so in hollow battle for a lower um amount of opponents because like if you're going against a team who killed you and there's a there's a lot of you know enemies left like if they still have three or four people um I don't really see you doing much, you know, unless you're Freddy crits out of his mind and you're able to push him up and then he goes again. But you have to use somebody who can benefit being low HP or who can lifesteal themselves back up to take advantage of the fact that Ollie just taunted somebody and then it did defense down. So somebody who can benefit from killing somebody after that. So maybe like even uh, Hercules, um, I think Taylor. Right, he could benefit from that having somebody with defense down, and he can do his ult, smack them, and go smack another person, right? While having the invincibility, but it also works having that person a little slow. That way, the invincibility lasts a lot longer for you. Everyone goes to their attack phase. You can heal them up, and they're not taking any damage. Um, so there, I mean, there are some ways this wouldn't be great because if you use this on a fast person, they would just get out of the invincibility really quick, 
they only get the 15 percent and typically not many fast espers have sustain so this would be wasted on some people i think you have to use this primarily for somebody who's like really uh either somebody who's really beefy like one of your tanks or defense users you know like your daughter or something like that um or somebody who you have just stacked with like a uh attack crit and you're gonna counter attack basically after you you know prevented them from dying um it also this also grants the caster invincibility i didn't see that so you're protecting now two people after this who are invincible so you could possibly have like a um healer or support or somebody keeping them like healed up maybe you can um also buff them with attack up and crit that way this can hurt uh because the target's max hp where it's where it's based off of it just depends on the values we don't have any values for this um but so far it seems like this is more of a like very specific situation where you have a unit who could actually like just smack somebody and i see this more so in a club hollow battle where this could be more dangerous for pve i really don't see this because like i mean taunt like I, I mean maybe if you're in the tower and you wanted it but it's not going to help you against hide um it might help you you know somewhere in the tower maybe cube but i don't really see it helping you on bosses really or anything like that so Asara seems like he's going to be really strong for club hollow battles honestly just first thoughts all right so laura neath she's going to be a four star shimmer so she's gonna be a little difficult to get let's look at her laura's a support esper who grants a shield to all allies and counterattacks the attacker when her shield is destroyed or dispelled oh that's really nice especially for somebody who has like a lot of damage so Laura's first ability, Shield Attack, deals damage to an enemy based on her attack and max HP with the chance of inflicting silence. So again, another person who possibly could use the counter set, right? Because she's going to be beefy, um, support Esper. So you're going to build health based off of her attack scaling on health, which is really nice. So as you're, because I'm assuming her shield is going to be based off her max HP as well. Yeah, I'm reading that. So you build her with health. She has counterattack. She's gonna have the shields. So she could that's gonna can be her own sustain. Maybe you give her recovery. Because recovery is based off of max HP and her recovery tick could be pretty ridiculous. So you want to use a recovery healer with her. So after each allied esper takes action, Laura's passive ability, Shield Guardian, grants the allied shield with which absorbs damage based on Nice max HP. Okay, so her second skill, definitely you probably want to max that out because it's going to most likely, um, if it can be, you know, skill upped, it's probably going to increase the amount of shield that she gets based off her max HP. And it says after they take an action, so I'm assuming it's going to be limited to when they um, take a turn, not like if they do a counter attack or they do an extra effect with their abilities. I wouldn't believe it would do that. Um, it's probably after they take a turn. So basically, after your people take a turn, they get a shield to protect themselves to go to their, you know, next turn. Like in Hollow Battle, this could be really strong. Um, this is going to be going towards more so the Bruiser meta with this because you're giving people like Donner a shield. You're giving people like, um, you got Lewis out there. You got Taylor, we just talked about Freddy. Like you have a lot of people who could benefit from a shield, especially like, you know, Freddy, Taylor's. Lewis is people who can just like obliterate somebody. This could be really annoying in hollow battle. For big teams, this helps you from surviving a little bit. Like, I don't believe Neath is gonna be super fast, right? Uh, to really get herself shielded. So, like, maybe if you have some supports who are really um really quick, like you have your Gabriel, she can give the defense up after she takes her turn, she gets a shield. Maybe if you push your team up, everybody acts, right? You'd have to, like, if you had a faster team than Neath, they could all get their shields, right? And then they could survive the the attack from the enemy. And then Neath can counterattack when, when the shield is destroyed or dispelled. So if they silence it, she counterattacks. So that could be really nice, especially if she counterattacks and flicks the silence. They can kind of shut down somebody. So I can see where this could be really annoying. I'm going to have to test her see what all of those values are but this could be interesting in a way for pvp uh for pve it could be nice right you could um 
just get some extra damage with the with the shield. You're protecting your people. You could probably use her with Bernice and just get huge shields. You got recovery on everybody. Um, and then if you're running a three healer comp, you could probably use like um, Hengyu, um, Chang'a basically, or anyone who does recovery, um, or even uh, Cheng uh somebody who heals off of max HP as well. So I could see where this could uh, be used really well with Bernice. You could just shield stack like crazy. Um, and then also people run Gabriel for extra defense. You can make your team really tanky and then just have some really strong DPSs. Lower start ability, Iron Wall grants shield and crit resist. Oh, that's a new buff for us. To all allied espers, if the target already has a shield, increases shield strength. So yeah, so this is where if everybody takes a turn, they get a shield, and then Laura does her turn, everyone gets a bigger shield, and pretty much that's going towards anti-cleave meta, because now you're giving everybody shields, you can increase your shield strength, and crit resist is definitely anti-cleave meta, because now you're protecting people from getting crit, because there are a lot of people who are maxing out crit for units like Drew, uh, Chloe, um, Donner, Neja, uh, Tang Yoon, um, like, basically any dps uh, especially lewis uh crit resist is going to be huge because honestly um having a way to reduce that is going to be amazing because now you're shielding you're getting less i'm assuming you're either it's either a less chance for them to crit because it says crit resist it doesn't say crit damage resist so it's causing them to not crit i assume and if you were to use somebody like loki as well to give them the miss rate up and they miss, you could have a very tanky team in PvP. In a three, in a three v v, in a three v three situation, I could see this being really strong as well, uh, which is why I assume they lowered the shield strength in PvP because yeah, shield meta could be a thing. Even though you can dispel a shield, here is somebody who doesn't want you to dispel a shield, and you could use her with Loki, like, and they get hit with a. Uh, petrify and a 30 percent max health taken off if they remove shields so you can have loki and laura together where they both punish you for taking off a yo yo terrible combo right here all right nicole nefertiz nicole is a support expert who can revive and take damage for allies while granting them defense up invincibility and other other buffs all right so this is where the revive meta is coming so Nicole's first ability, Spiral Strike, deals damage to an enemy based on her max HP with the chance of inflicting Seer. Uh, maybe counterattack for, you know, hollow battle for uh, point for, uh, what is that called? Point war? Uh, I don't know. Seer is kind of just like, meh. Like, if you can get Seer, it's really awesome, right? But, like, usually, typically, Seer is harder to inflict on people because it is just straight up 25% extra damage they take. Um, but this is based off of her max HP. So obviously we're gonna be building a lot of max HP on her, which you know typically you do with supports. Uh second ability, Dead Man's Protection grants Soul Guard to an allied Esper. Ascension. When Soul Guard revives an allied Esper, Nicole immediately grants them standoff and recovery. Okay, so that's good. That seems like a um seems like a PvE type of thing for PvP really good in three of these situations for for point war maybe let's see what this rest of this does part of the damage taken by the carrier will be redistributed to the caster the carrier when dies revives immediately and restores a certain amount of hp based on their max hp this buff expires on the caster's death okay so she can bring back so she can bring back an ally and give them standoff for recovery to heal themselves up Basically gives them another turn, and then they can't be infected by AP with the standoff. And then she can revive herself based off of her max HP immediately. And she's taking... Uh, and the person... So this is definitely a hollow battle thing, too. Um, for big team, maybe. It depends on how you make this work. Because she's marking somebody. So whoever dies first... Part of the damage, part of the damage will be distributed to her. So anti-cleave-ish, if you give her a lot of HP, and then when she finally dies, she'll revive, which is interesting. Because you can take 
Because if you know in hollow battle, somebody's going to target your these these units are honestly really strong for hollow battle, which is crazy because right hollow battle is coming out. Because like if you know the enemy is going to want to take out a certain unit, like uh, it depends on if you're fighting AI or not. But then Nicole can revive that person. They have standoff for recovery. Then whenever she dies, like she'll revive back. And then what does her ult do? Deals damage to all enemies based on her max HP, granting defense up and invincibility to all allied experts and soul guard to the ally with the lowest HP. So you can't control, of course, I didn't think you could, uh, who you want soul guarded. So it's based off of who has the lowest HP. Not sure if it's based off of an HP value, like as in um, a flat value or if it's percent, because if it's by, you know, percent or flat value, it's depending on which one it is, it's hard to guarantee who the soul guard is. But basically you could use this defense up and invincibility to if your DPS is taking a lot of damage, you can protect them with invincibility, mark them. Uh, now Nicole is taking a part of their damage, right? And whenever they die, they get revived. So you can bring them back. So it's a one person. I don't really see this working in uh, PVE super hard, but this is PVP for sure. Um, because this is now giving defense up and invincibility, which if you have a slower team, uh, invincibility is really great, especially, you know, when they, if they can't really dispel it. And then defense up just helps you get tankier, which I don't understand the defense up and invincibility uh, because invincibility makes you not take damage and defense up helps you not take as much damage. So I'm, I'm guessing the defense up is going to last longer than the invincibility. Maybe defense up for, you know, two turns and invincibility for one turn because I, I don't see the point of doing both of them at the same time, uh, you know. But maybe, maybe it could work. Um, but yeah, I see this as a really big hollow battle user because people who give like um, revive one person, right? Like Cecilia can revive a whole team, which makes her annoying for point war. Reviving one person is really nice in PvP, but if she doesn't do like an AP push or anything like that, then they're still slow. So then they could still be killed. They could still have, you know, their buffs taken off and everything like that. So this is a smaller scale of PvP type of thing. All right, so Meredith Scylla. Meredith possesses powerful life steal and support abilities. Meredith's first ability, Sonic Venom, attacks an enemy with a chance of inflicting poison. Uh, so automatically she seems like she's going to be for PvE because poison is not very strong in PvP right now. Too many people who have dispels, honestly. Meredith's second ability, Sonic Shield, restores a certain amount of HP and grants defense up and crit resist to an allied esper. The second ability makes her seem a little bit better for PvP, uh, right? With the crit resist and defense up, you're making your team really tanky. But people have Gabriel, so that's the defense up. And then you have Neath, who can give the crit resist. Even though this is the second ability, it's not quite the ult, right? It's it's still like, you know, you could just do this for PvE for your tower or for your bosses and just have an easier time. You know, you could put her with Jacob since she throws out a poison. You could help out Jacob a little bit, make sure he doesn't get killed, right? Uh, Meredith's third ability, Hand of Scylla. Reduces the max HP of an enemy by a certain percentage and restores HP to all, all allied espers equal to a portion of damage dealt. Um, now, this, now this is making her seem a little bit more better for uh, PV, um, PvP because now she's reducing the max HP of enemies by a certain percentage, which that percentage matters a lot. She's a four star wind element, so at least she's a four star. We gotta see if this, um, how much at max HP she takes off because it's gonna make some tankier units uh, hurt, right? Because you can start having some anti-tank going on because there's a couple of units who reduce max HP. And if you can use her in combination with some of those, then this could be really strong. And it restores HP based off of that. In her ascension, if an allied esper's HP is above a certain ratio, grant speed up. So now you guys are faster too to kind of clean them up. So this could help out. Um, hollow battle doesn't seem like it's going to be that strong because you kind of want a full like five to do this, um, to do this against because 
you restore HP based off of it, right? But you could possibly make it work in a 3v3 situation, but it doesn't seem as strong. For PvE, this seems really good, especially when you're going against those like enemies in like the cube and the tower who have a lot of HP. Now you're reducing the max HP, which is, you know, always great to do a percentile type damage. And if this can't be resist or anything like that, I could be really strong, honestly. Um, so if I were to say, right, uh, out of these units, what you're like looking for, if they're worth it, right? Um, Ollie Osiris, I really only see him being worth it for you in PvP. Uh, Honestly, and if you're trying to go up high in PvP, um, I don't see him really working for you in point war. Honestly, uh, this doesn't seem very strong. Now, if you're trying to be a beast in club battles and hollow battles, then he can be very useful for you. And that's, you know, totally a thing for you if you're free to play. Um, is it worth for you to get a unit that's going to be really strong for you in club battles? Like, you know, is your club somebody who's going to be super competitive? Um, and do you have other units you can use Ollie with? Because you're going to have to use somebody who's beneficial at low health or who can do a lot of single target damage to clear out the enemy that he taunted and did defense down to. So you got to think about that, right? Um, I don't really see him doing anything for you in PvE, honestly. This is going to be a PvP unit. So if you are a heavy PvP unit and you want to get really heavy into hollow battles, then yeah, it's worth getting Osiris. Now, if you're just doing it for, you know, you just want to collect the characters, collect the characters. Fine. Uh, Neath. Probably going to be a must-have in PvP. Um, honestly, she's going to be at the top of the meta. Uh, because the fact that she can give shield and crit resist. Um, and she can counterattack. And she can keep giving shields. Um, yeah, Neath is going to be at the top of the meta for protection for your units. Making him tanky. To give uh, to get us closer to that anti-cleave meta. To get bruiser meta. Uh, she's going to be great in hollow battles. She's going to be great in big team battles. She's great for PvE. So yes, Laura, Neath great unit you should definitely summon try to get her she's a shimmer i know it's gonna be a little difficult it's funny how the shimmer is you know the shimmer unit is gonna just be difficult especially since everyone's trying to get lin Zhao and all that but laura is a yes you should definitely try to summon for her even though it's gonna be re really hard um because she's a shimmer at least try if you can um nicole um yes Again, another unit where if you're in a point war, giving everybody defense up and invincibility is going to be really strong to give you a turn to counter uh, to counter them after they do all of their attacks, right? Especially since it's AI, they're not going to hold their attacks once you have invincibility, typically. So she's going to be a great point war um, user. In, um, in PvE... Since you have a full team, I mean, maybe, but the fact that she only revives one person, it's not as strong in PvE. She's going to be definitely a PvP person, uh, you know, to really focus on the defense up and invincibility. So, you know, with the Seer, it's okay, but there's other people who give Seer, honestly. So, again, this is going to be a PvP unit. Mostly to me, you can do PvE, but yeah, Hollow Battle, she's going to be really strong um point war she's gonna be kind of strong with her aoe invincibility defense up but i don't know her stats and everything like that to really base anymore meredith's gonna be free with the event so uh she's gonna be acquired in the event shop so like if you get her you get her with the defense up and crit resist um she can be really nice uh also with the taking off max percentage i feel like she could be a really decent uh pve unit um for PvP, just have to see the value of this. But she's free, so it doesn't really matter. But again, uh, Neath, Laura, is honestly the unit that I'm going to be really trying to get. Because she seems like she's going to be bonkers. And resonance on her would be amazing. Because everything's based off of max HP. So, yeah, that's pretty much um, what I have to say. Again, uh, these units seem heavily PvP focused. With the exception of Neath being kind of made for both um and then Scylla she's free but she's kind of PVE but anyways uh that's pretty much all I have for this guys um if you guys like this video please hit the like button if you guys have anything to say you want to comment what you guys think you think something different please comment down below I'd love to hear you guys thoughts and subscribe to the channel if you guys want more of this dislike content I'm trying to put out more videos I've been live streaming pretty hard on Twitch 
twitch.tv lucky lux gaming i have everything in the description uh so i try to stream every day uh as much as i can right i stream anywhere from like you know four or five hours to like 12 hours so come out there and hang out we talk about a lot of different things in the game uh anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you lucky gamers have a good one lucky lux out